All right, so I'm recording. So I'm Drew. Uh, you can call me Mr. Drew or 3D printing dude or whatever. So um, Ms. Kaylee, nice to meet you. And who else is there? That we're gonna this be is uh, Mallory, Carly, Diana, and Abby. Awesome. Say hi. So yeah, let's go ahead and learn some 3D printing stuff. So are you the ones that put the 3D printer together too? No. Different class. It was Cool. Yeah, that's fine. So, have any of you 3D printed anything before, or seen a 3D printer in person? Yeah, you have. Awesome. What 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 class did you do that in? Was it in East? Another East class? Yeah. Cool. Was it? Did the printers look like this? Or they look different. No, it's not this one. We have another one. It's the little one behind that there. On that one right there. Yeah. The awesome. Yeah. Okay, I can't really hear you very well. I think because the mic's probably directional, Miss Keenly. Like, so I can only hear when you're like in front of the computer. Can a you hear times, me? A lot of times, the laptops have directional mics. They do. Can you hear me from here? I the beginning of it, I heard. <laughs> okay, I'll take another mic to put on here. There you go. Now I can hear you. Okay, I'm on the other side. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So. The process of 3D printing then is going to be the same on any 3D printer. It's three big steps. So first, what you're going to do is make a file. So you can make a file in like Tinkercad or have you guys used Tinkercad before? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Or Fusion 360 is another one that you can make stuff in. Any way to get a digital file and it's a .stl file. That's what you need. And then you take that and put it into Cura. And Cura is called the slicing program and that turns that 3D file into the file for the printer. So have you guys done that before too and kind of practice it? Nice. Okay, cool. So with Cura, the biggest thing is making sure that you have the right printer selected. So if you guys want to go ahead and while we're talking and getting started, if you want to open Cura on the computer, we can double check the settings and get going on that. And then once you have the, uh, the file, you save it to that SD card and then put that on the printer and then you print your print and you make sure it's calibrated and everything else that goes along with it wherever you want to set up. So we can go ahead and open up Cura and just make sure that everything is all set up just like it should be. So Cura 4.3 works the best with the A31. That's the big one that you guys have. I'm in the process of getting it updated, but it's not updated yet. So it will work with the newer version, but it, it is a little bit weird. Up. Yes, loading. Okay. It's loading. Let me make sure I'm getting your part ready. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, I started that part ready. I can't really I can't really hear you. I think the mic on the laptop is only works when you're really close to the front of the laptop. So a lot of times the, the laptops have that. Or if it's a Chromebook, sometimes Chromebooks are like that too. Can you say that one more time? Did you get it open? Yes. Yeah, okay. Is it version 4.3? No, it's 4.7. Okay, so 4.7 might be a little weird, and you can, the default settings for the A31, but if you change them, it can get kind of strange with the default settings. So we don't have to change that now, but the main thing that we want to do is make sure when we print on the A5, we have the A5 selected, the NWA 3D A5. And then when we go to the A31, we make sure that it says the 0 0.6 nozzle is selected when we switch back and forth between the different printers. Do you know what I mean when I say yeah. that? Okay. So like in the middle one where it says nozzle 0 0.4, we want to make sure that that says 0 0.6. That's the biggest thing we want to do for the big printer. Do I have to add a printer? So that'll be in the middle. So here, I'll share my screen with you and I'll show you what I mean. So. If you have your printer right now, what printer do you have right now? What's it say right here? A5. A5. Okay. So, yeah, click right here and then click add printer and then add a non network printer. And then we're going to scroll down to the NWA 3D A31. Right there. And then click add. Okay. 
Okay. And then now we're going to click right here where it says standard in the middle and change this to engineering 0 0.6. Let okay. you change it? Yes. Okay, cool. And then now we have this set up. So we slice files, we can switch back and forth between these two printers. So we have our A31 and then we have our A5. So you know which one you're using. So when you slice them, you'll take those files on the SD card and then put it on those different printers. Is that what you did with the A5 before? Yes. Okay, awesome. Well, then we'll be ready to rock. So Cure is all set then. We've got all, Cure all set up like it needs to be. So now let's go ahead and double check the A31 and make sure it's all built correctly. So let's go ahead and look at it. And I'll move my camera over here so we can kind of see it. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our, our plate right here, it's the metal and then glass and then our blue surface and then our clips are on here. And then they're pulled back out of the way like this so the nozzle can move around and not bump into them. Is that what your plate looks like? Uh, the clips are forward. Okay. Yeah, just flip them back so they get out of the way. And then when, the, when it's printing and moving around, they won't get in the way of it. Because this whole plate, you can take off. That's why it has clips. And then you can flex it, and you can pop your prints off. And if you ever need to clean it, you can clean it with some alcohol. So did you get it? Yes. OK, cool. So then now, let's go ahead and check and make sure that it doesn't rock back and forth. It should be really solid. It shouldn't rock this way. It should only move forward and back. Is that true? Yes. OK, cool. And the same with the nozzle. It shouldn't rock either. And, and if these things ever wiggle, there's a little nut right here that's on one of these wheels that you can adjust. So if you ever need to do that in the tools, if anything's ever wiggly and it's not supposed to be, you can tighten it and those nuts will tighten it. They're called eccentric nuts. They go round and round and then they tighten these parts. So they only move side to side. So this is the Y, it goes forward and back. This is the X, it goes side to side. And then the Z goes up and down. So back here in the back, this is the Y. Both of these connectors right here should say Y on them. And they're in the wires that are kind of by themselves and they both say Y. Do they both say why? Right here, these two in the back. This is why right here, and this is why. This little switch in that. Yeah? Okay, awesome. And then over here on the side, we've got the X. That's these two right here. That's what moves this side to side. This is the X switch that zero is, and this is the motor. So both of these should be X. Both of these right here. Are those both X? That's an E. Okay, I gotta look at that again. These two right here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then these should be Z. These two should be Z right here. Are those Z? Oh, Good. Yeah. Nice. And then this one is E. That's the extruder that feeds the filament. This one right here, that has this little lever that you squeeze. Does that say E? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So then now we're ready to turn our printer on. And then with a flip the little switch on the back and then we'll take our filament and we're gonna feed it into this little hole right here. So when we're not using our filament, we have it pulled through this hole in the side so it doesn't come untangled like thread or, or a weed eater line. And then we'll take it out of this and you can cut the end of it into a point using the little pliers that look like this that came with your printer or some scissors. And then when you cut it into a point, you'll feed that right here into the hole on your printer. So it goes right here into this little hole right there. It goes right in there. 
and you squeeze this lever and then you can feed it through there. And it goes through here, here, and then all the way through the tube. So go ahead and load filament in your printer. Okay, we've got that part. You got it in there already? Okay, awesome. Well, it looks like my plug fell down here to, unpl to plug my printer in, so one second. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So now we're ready to calibrate our printer and level it. Did you guys do that on the A5 on this one right here? Yes. Have you guys done that before? Yes. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to go over how to do it on, on the large one then, and then we'll be ready to go. So with this, what we'll do is we'll tap this button and then go to setup and then auto home and then tap it. And then that will zero this out, X, Y, and Z at zero. And then when it stops, let me know. We'll be ready for the next step. It stopped. Yeah? Okay, sweet. So then now, tap the button again and click Disable Motors. And if you don't see where that is, then go back to Setup and then Disable Motors. And I'll put my filament in. And sometimes it can be a little tricky and you gotta, gotta make sure you bend it straight. There we go. All right. So now what we're gonna do is once this is stopped and we've disabled the motor, so when we tap setup and then disable motors. We're going to move this and move this nozzle above this little wheel right here on the bottom. So kind of move the plate and then move the nozzle until it's above it, just like that. You got it there? Yes. Cool. Okay, so now when you turn this knob this direction toward the screen, it pulls the plate down. And when you turn it this way, it goes up. So what we want is the tiniest of tiny, tiny little gaps between the nozzle and the plate. So just so you can barely see that it's not touching. That's how close we want it to be. We want it to be just barely there to where it's just barely not touching. So go ahead and turn this knob. And you might have to turn it a little bit. That's fine. Until it's just barely not touching it. About as thick as a piece of paper would be. What do you think? Are really close? Yes. You think you got it? Yes. Yeah? Okay, sweet. So then now, move it over here above this one. And this time, I want you to get a piece of paper. So any sort of just flat piece of paper and fold it in half. And we're going to use it as a gauge because we can use a piece of paper too. So we'll split this between the nozzle and the plate. And then same thing, we're going to take this wheel and spin it until the paper drags. And you feel it dragging quite a bit and scratching. Because the distance between the nozzle and the plate is this folded piece of paper. That's what we're going for. So you might have to turn a little bit. There we go. Until you can feel it dragging when you pull with your thumb and forefinger. And you'll feel the tension on it. And you'll kind of feel it dragging back and forth. So let me know when you get it. I got it. Nice. So now we're going to do the same thing all the way around. So pull this forward and use either the paper or visually looking at it. I showed you two different ways. So either way to adjust these. So then the nozzle is just barely not touching, either using the paper as a guide or as this until it's just barely not touching. And we can kind of adjust it here until it's just barely not there. And mine was pretty low, so I had to go quite a bit on mine. 
until it's just barely not touching. There we go. And then go all the way around one more time. So we're gonna go around twice with either the paper or visually looking at it to make sure that it's all set exactly where it needs to be. Just to double check. There we go. And let me know when you've gone all the way around twice. And show one of your friends too, so you're not the only one doing it. Because I see everybody else just kind of hanging out. I want everybody to, to have a chance. How's it going? Do you need help with something or is it is, is it working? It What do you think? You think you got it? Yes. Nice. Okay, cool. So now let's get our SD card that came with the A31 and add the instructions on. And we're going to put that in the side of the A31. So it goes with the gold contacts up right here in this slot in the side, right here. Okay. And it goes right in there and then it clicks in. Like the A5 only upside down. Whoops. And I have to unplug your printer like I just did mine. <laughs> there we go. And then now tap the button and then just like the A5, we'll go to refresh SD card, print from SD. And then scroll down until you get to touch print or test prints. Test prints. And then we're going to touch or tap on this button right here on the A31 calibration practice. That's the one that we're going to do. So this is a practice print that's going to heat up the bill plate and then the nozzle. And then what it's going to do 
is it's going to go round and round and round and round on your A31. So you can practice adjusting it while it's printing. So you can make sure that that first layer is stuck by rubbing your finger across the filament that's on the plate. And if it knocks loose, the blade has to come up. And if it's so close, you barely see anything, then the plate needs to go down. And you'll adjust it by those four knobs that we adjusted it before. Have you done that on the A5? Have you adjusted it while it's printing? Yes. Nice. Y'all have been rocking out 3D printing, I can tell. I like that wall of filament that you guys got too. Do you have any projects in mind? Any East projects that you want to 3D print? Right now I'm working on a board game for people with dyslexia. Awesome. What's the, what's a, what kind of board game is it? Like, what do you do? It's like where you roll a dice and you move along with your little ships that I 3D printed. And then you, sometimes you'll come across a square with a card. You draw a card and then you have to answer a question. Nice. That's awesome. Right. That's awesome. Do they like read sentences and stuff like that? Is that kind of what it is? Yes, and if you answer it right, you get these tokens that you count up at the end of the game, and whoever has the most wins. That's awesome. I'm a little bit dyslexic, so that game sounds pretty sweet. That's how I learned it. It just read over and over and over again when I was younger. Does anybody else have a project that they're working on? I'm not sure. Not yet? Or maybe they can be inspired by the board game and make another game. That'd be pretty sweet. So it takes a little bit to heat up. Because it has to heat the bed first and then the nozzle. And the bed takes the longest because it's so big. Do you have one of your 3D printed ships that I can see? While we're waiting on it? I want to see what you made. It's like this. Oh, cool. Where did you find those? It's on a little website called Pinshape. What website? Pinshape. Oh, okay. Pinshape. Yeah, cool. Did you design any of the parts of the board yourself, like in Tinkercad or anything? That's what I was going to work on. I, that's really the only thing that I've done. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, Tinkercad is an awesome place to start where you can start moving stuff around. You can even take those ships and import the STLs into Tinkercad and you can edit them and change them for your game and like add numbers to them or change the base or the way they look, whatever you'd want to. So does anybody have any questions about 3D printing so far while we're waiting for this to heat up? No, sir. No, sir. Everybody feel all right? So mine's almost heated the bed. It's at 48. And you can read the temperature on yours. What's yours say? 50. Cool. So then the nozzle is probably starting to get hotter now too. Yes. Awesome. So that's the one part of this that's hot is the nozzle. So that's what you got to watch out for. Just like the tip of a hot glue gun, the nozzles are hot.
So when it gets done heating, it's going to zero itself out. Those are those little switches are right here that we checked. So each one of these has an X switch and then the X motor and, you know, Y switch and the Y motor and the Z switch and the Z motor. So it gets those switches and that zeroes itself out and then it's going to start printing. So the robot always knows where zero is. And mine's about to start. Go ahead and adjust this a little bit. And then this, like I said, is just going to go round and round and round and then we can make adjustments on it. Is it starting yet? It's on 219. Okay, cool. So ours are both probably going to start right about the same time. And what I always recommend is watch the very first layer and make sure that it's sticking well before you walk away from the 3D printer. And then it'll stack all the layers on top of that first one and you'll know that it's going to print successfully because if it curls up on the edges when it's printing, that means that it was too far away. The nozzle was too far away from the plate and it came loose. And then if it's so close that you can't see anything when it's moving around, that means that it's too close and it'll be really hard to remove. Like even with the scraper, it'll just be really tough to remove. And like I said, you can always clean this with some alcohol, but if there's parts and stuff that are stuck on here, it doesn't have to look perfect. You can see how mine is all messed up. It doesn't have to be perfect. So it's gonna make a little square on the inside. And then it's going to go around the outside and we're going to ignore the one in the inside for now and just watch the outside because that'll help us practice adjusting it. And it might take it a second to build up pressure and that's okay. And then as it starts to go around, we'll see the line. So you can kind of see mine, how the line is coming out. And then when it kind of turns this corner, we'll be able to inspect it. So we can look here, here's the line. And if I rub my finger across it, it doesn't knock loose. And that's what we're shooting for. But it can be too far away in one spot and too close in another. So if I move over here, I can see this just feels like it's maybe a little bumpy. It's stuck, but it's bumping out a little bit because this is a little bit farther away. But we want it to be nice big square all the way around. So we'll do the same thing back here, kind of test it, and rub our finger across it. And then once it goes around a couple times, we can check it and see. So how does it look? Is your square sticking? Yes. Nice. So what we want is each row of the square to be stuck together. So if you can see gaps of the plate between each one of the lines, that means the nozzle is still a tiny bit too far away and it needs to be close enough to where it's stuck together like this. And if it's so close that the lines are smashed together and it's like curling up like this or something like that, like peaks and valleys, that means it's a little bit too close. So I can look right here and this looks a little smashed. So I'm gonna adjust this knob right here a little bit, just a tiny bit, whoop, like a fourth of a turn toward the screen, which pulls the plate down a little bit. And you can see right here too, it's not solid all the way across. So I know that was a little bit too close there. So I adjusted it and then we'll let it go back around. And then once it goes around, you can take your scraper and actually take it off while it's printing and then you can inspect it. Because we wanna check and make sure that the lines are stuck together all the way around. And it looks like these are pretty good. And you won't hurt your printer by peeling this off because that's what we're shooting for. We want those lines to be nice and stuck. So what do you think? Are they stuck together in y'all's printer? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Is that the bell? Do you guys gotta go? 
Okay. Well, we probably got like five more minutes just to double check this and then we're good. You got to go? No. I can tell you're here to, you're here to stay. You're here to rock and roll. See y'all. Okay, we do have a class change and I've got a different group of kids coming in. So can you hang on with us for a second while we do that? Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. So how's it look? Does it still look stuck all the way around? Those lines stuck together? Yes. All right, nice work. So calibrating is the toughest part. You got to make sure that it's calibrated and then you got to make sure you have those correct settings in Cura. Those are the two biggest things to 3D printing successfully. All right, y'all. So, Miss Keeney, that's that's all I got. You're rocking and rolling. That's good. We're so excited. You're doing great. Yeah. Everything's printing well. Everything was built perfectly. Everything's sticking as it's moving around. Yes. Do you have any more questions or anything for me? I don't think so. What do you think, Mallory? Are you good? Okay, Mallory. Awesome. Well, I'm going to send you this video and then do you want me to send you a private link or do you care if we make it public? So as part of our care. knowledge base, is that okay? okay? It can be public. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll make it on YouTube. We'll make it public and then I'll send you the link. And, uh, and if you need anything at all, you'll have my email and have fun 3d printing. Awesome. Thank you so much. You bet. Have a good weekend. See y'all. Bye.